The Obama administration getting more pushback against its claims about the possible fallout of recent budget changes. And now at least one member of the president's cabinet is changing his tune after a week of standing by his original story, which we now know was not true. In the week before President Obama signed uh, the spending changes, no, the spend, spending changes were signed into law a long time ago. And then President Obama had to actually sign something to execute them on Friday night, and he did. But in the week leading up to that, we had several administration figures coming out there and warning the American public of dire consequences to these decreases in the expected increase in spending this year. We're still going to spend more, just not as much as we thought we were. But lots of administration officials came out and said, it's going to be catastrophic. Uh, you, we really need to worry. And one of them was Education Secretary Arne Duncan, who repeatedly, at least four times, warned not only of impending layoffs for teachers, but actually went so far as to say pink slips were already being handed out to teachers. Now, after being repeatedly pressed on the issue and given four Pinocchios by the Washington Post on his claims, Secretary Duncan is saying he misspoke. Here's how it played out over the last week and a half. There are literally teachers now who are getting pink slips, who are getting notices they can't come back this fall. You're confident that teachers are already getting pink slips, as you said. Um, yeah, I mean, I know of a, uh, yes, there's a district where it's happened, but again, it's just because they have an earlier union notification than most. So it's uh, uh, Kanawha, just Kanawha County in West Virginia. But the, not, the vast majority of them will be rolling out over the next uh, two months. So Secretary Duncan, earlier this week on a couple of occasions, you said that there are teachers who are already being laid off because of the sequester. Are you prepared to say now that that was an exaggeration on your part? I'm going to be really, really clear and just sort of getting caught in the details here. What I said is that teachers were getting notices. They were get, and in the district we talked about, 110 teachers have gotten notices. Now, I think there was a misinterpretation that meant they're being laid off tomorrow. That's not what I said. That's not what I meant. But let's not lose the full. They're, the, oh, they're, so they're getting slips now. They're getting notices now. So that's, I think, where some of the, the uh, misunderstanding was. But the fact of the matter is, whether it's what's already happened or what's coming across the country over the next two months, which I also said tens of thousands of teachers potentially are going to be getting these notices across the country. And so the impact here is very, very significant. And both you and the so when I said pink slips, that was probably the wrong word. I should have used job eliminations, positions eliminated. You sort of heard repeatedly uh, that, so I should have been clear there. Secondly, when I said impact on teachers, I should have said impact on educators. It's not just teachers. It's obviously support staff, guidance counselors, uh, uh, folks working with special education students. Um, so I need, you know, language matters. I need language matters. That's what he says. Joining me now to discuss it, Leslie Marshall, a syndicated radio talk show host and a Fox News contributor, and Lars Larson, who's a syndicated radio host with Compass Media oh Networks. Boy. I mean, I, I'm, I, 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 I don't know where to begin, because I want the viewers to know it goes deeper than this. The first soundbite we played there where he said there are literally teachers who, now who are getting pins, pink slips, who are getting notices yeah. that they cannot come back this fall. That was February 23. February 21 which of course is two days before he made that initial claim on the Sunday talk shows. On the Sunday talk shows, that was the first bite we showed you. Two days before he had a conference call with reporters where he said, schools are already starting to give teachers notices and said 40,000 teachers could lose their jobs. When pressed by reporters later after the facts came out on how that was not likely to be true, some staffer to him said, well, that was a rough back of the envelope calculation. Rough back of the envelope? So two, February 21st he says it? Then he goes out on the Sunday talk shows and says that there is a higher bar there should be with his administration now, what you say on the Sunday talk shows after what we saw in Benghazi and Susan Rice and what happened. And then he doubles down on it again on March 1st and says, yes, they are getting pink slips. And the Washington Post says, for Pinocchios, they aren't getting pink slips. The one county you could finally identify is maybe laying off five or six teachers, and it has nothing to do with the sequester. Lars? Megan, 
if you're going to do presidential prevarication, the president expects his cabinet secretaries to back him up. And those of us who've been reporting on government for a few decades understand that government is constantly crying wolf every time they don't get an increase of the size they want. This is like Bill Clinton trying to redefine what is is. I mean, pink slips means pink slips. But they, I think, expect the mainstream media to go out and simply write down their words and not bother to check with the school district. Are people really being fired? And are they being fired because of federal funding, which, believe me, call your local school district, federal funding is a relatively minor portion, a measurable portion, but a minor portion of school funding, police funding, firefighter funding, and the like. Yet these guys know if they don't go out and back up the president and say this is going to be a financial tsunami for local government, then it's, oh, we're cutting two and a half percent from the federal budget, and it really isn't going to have much effect at all. The president needs this to be seen as a big crisis. And I can't wait for Leslie to try to explain how a cabinet secretary can lie to the public about something this serious That's and then wanna, explain that, it as, oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I want to ask you that question, Leslie. Do you believe that, that mm -hmm. he was being blatantly dishonest or that he misspoke as he now claims? Megan, I have a problem with that term misspoke. I had a problem with it with a former <laughs> president with WMDs, and I have a problem with it today. I'm an old-fashioned girl, call it what it is. You either exaggerated or you're outright lied. But this is not an outright lie, Lars. Americans are not stupid. Uh, pink slips, job elimination. The reality is that over $4 million specifically of federal funds specifically to education is going to be cut. The reality is that 37,000 jobs in education will be cut, 25,000 of those will be teachers, and teaching assistants do sometimes and do not sometimes fall under that 25,000 number, so it could even be higher. So, you know, the fact that he's saying these pink slips were issued now, I believe that that he misspoke outright lie exaggeration that is not true the fact that pink slips will be issued and to me the bigger issue is not the semantics but what we're doing to our kids what we're doing to these programs like head start uh, children who have special needs and disabilities and require that education that to me should be the issue not that well, this she, guy kept saying she the raises thing a good point times. that that may have been the debate we would be having Right, what actually is yes. going to happen, and the, and whether it's a good thing or a needed thing or a bad thing, but instead, we have somebody who didn't tell us the truth. Lars repeatedly didn't tell May us the truth, and this yes. isn't a Fox News and thing. The Washington Post has been calling this guy out repeatedly, right. and then even when he was given the chance to clarify, once again, and then once again beyond that, doubled and tripled down, not just with the initial claim about pink slips actually going out, but then overstating the numbers in West Virginia, saying it was 100 teachers, when in fact the administration's whole estimate for the entire state of West Virginia was maybe 80 teachers and their aides might be affected. He's saying 100 teachers right. in one county in West Virginia, which is what had Washington Post reporters and others saying, this guy's not being straight with us. And as it turns out, he wasn't, Lars. Well, it's dishonesty. And the fact is, is that Leslie needs to think about something. In the private sector over the last five years, I think I can say all of us have taken cuts. I have personally. The companies I work for have taken cuts. And what they do is they sensibly look around and say, what are the things we need to have and what are the things that are nice to have? And some of that is personnel. And you make adjustments. Sometimes you even go to your workforce and say, the company isn't making as much money. We need to make cutbacks. But if we could get all of you to take a pay cut, Cut or cuts in other benefits, then we can I still carry I, on the I mission. I get all that, but well, listen, so, well, the but point, they're not doing I don't want to be too hard on Secretary Duncan. All right, he seems like a nice guy, quite frankly. I think you should. And be. the reports are that he is. <laughs> you should be. But I, I he's a liar. I, Leslie, I listen to him, and I think, am I naive? Does honesty matter anymore in politics? Should we be expecting our cabinet secretaries? to level with us, because I'll tell you, we just did a debate the other day about President Obama making some warning about janitors on Capitol Hill getting laid off, and that got four Pinocchios from the Washington Post as well. <laughs> um, Megan, I have to say, left or right, whether it's a commander in chief, the head of the educational department for the entire United States of America, I, I, I really have given up on 100% of the truth from either party, mm -hmm. from any position, mm -hmm. and I think it's sad. What I think is awesome is that we have the ability from some liberal media outlets, Lars, like the Washington Post, did you notice, um, to, to call people out, whether it be with Pinocchios, pants on fire, 
and 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 I think it's you know awesome that you know we have the ability uh, to fact check this. And, and, I, and I think it's essential that the American people kind of get a second opinion, like yeah. you would with a doctor, on well, these Leslie, issues. I love that because you say it's at awesome. the end of so the, the day, the the of the day these teachers will lose their jobs in the long run. They haven't been issued pink slips today, but we, many of them, over 25,000 of them, will. We've got four Pinocchios, we've got Pants on Fire, and then we have uh, my own uh, little chestnut, which is. <laughs> Um, or, you know, the long thing passed down for generations of my family, which this works too, uh, although not in print. Anyway, I got to leave it at that, you guys. We're going to pick this debate up on credibility uh, in just a bit here on Fox News and, and talk about whether it's been sacrificed in this battle. Thank you both. Thanks, Thanks Megan. Me.